reveal thing. Again, he took again, he took again. Welcome. We are here on a cold March morning on a beautiful Vancouver Island lake. And today I'm gonna to be doing a bit of a tutorial or a guide on how to shore fish for trout effectively and catch big fish. Now I've actually got quite a detailed video on how to catch big trout in lakes with the twitch jig method. That video focused mainly on tactics to use from a boat or float tube, stuff like that. Anyway, this video isn't gonna be quite as formal or in detail as that one was because a few of the core steps are gonna be the same as in finding the kind of lake you should fish, setting up the kind of gear you want to use for this kind of fishing. I am going to go over some of those things briefly in this video, but this video is mainly going to be sort of a follow along of a day fishing from the bank on a lake that is not so easy to fish from the bank, where I give some tips and methods along the way while fishing that build off of some of the things I talked about in that previous tutorial video on how to catch big trout in lakes. One last key thing before we actually get fishing here that is quite different from that previous trout video. It is especially important when you're fishing from shore and you're going to do a day like I am, where you might be doing a lot of walking and some difficult walking where your gear could get snagged up on stuff. You have big backpacks and multiple rods and all that. I definitely recommend to go as light and little gear as possible. All I'm gonna be bringing today is one ultralight rod, one quite small backpack with a net that I can attach to it. And this is gonna really help me walking through all of these bushes and trees and crap to get to the places where I actually know that there are fish. That was a hit. That was a fish for sure. Oh my God, he just hit twice. Hit again. Got him. That's a fish. Not huge, but that is the first fish of the day. There we go. Little cutty. Little silver cutty. There we go. That is not bad. Casting right alongside the shore into that heavy cover of those logs right there. Just like in the previous tutorial video, I'm going to emphasize a lot how important it is to use barbless hooks because it really is much lower impact on the fish and much easier to unhook them. All right, first fish of the day. Let's get little buddy released here. Very pretty silver little cutthroat. There he goes. And now my hand's gonna be freezing for a little bit. And if, uh, if any of you are doubting how cold it is because of how nice and sunny it is, this net is frozen. Just like my hands. It's literally frozen. <laughs> and that's after about 30 seconds of being out of the water. Well, I was just about to leave, but in this exact same spot with an, oh, that's a good one. That is a decent fish. In this exact same spot, I just got that little one. I was making my last cast before we leave here. Really, really short cast right in front of me, and I just hooked a very colored up, pretty cutthroat. Let's see if we can get them netted here. There we go. Wow, that is a pretty fish. Oh my God. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous cutthroat, unreal. Well, I really wish I filmed that cast, but literally I was casting directly sideways to me along the shore in very shallow water and a very close cast too. This fish bit maybe 10 feet away from me in, you know, two, three feet of water. Wow, what a gorgeous fish. So pretty. Windy, really windy. 
One other thing I'm gonna mention as we move to this next spot here is that especially when you are physically arriving at the lake right beside a lot of the cover you wanna be fishing under, before you make some long cast out to the side at some other cover straight out or whatever, make casts right in front of you because these fish, especially where I am in the colder months, will follow your jig right up to your rod tip and strike multiple times like both of those past two fish did. So I'm standing on this log, the drop off's right in front of me and before I do any crazy casts out to the side there, I'm gonna cast right in front of me, right there. Oop. My line is frozen to the reel. Come on, get out there. All right, now that I've made a cast right in front of me, I'm going to cast straight along the side of this drop-off. Still a close cast, but I'm gonna bring it right along this drop-off from shallow to deep, because that is where they are gonna be. There we go. Man, he took on the fall and he had it for a little while there. That's another pretty good one. Maybe even a little bit better than the last one. Very good fish. Gotta wet my frozen net here. There we go, beauty. Another 17 incher or so, 17, 18 incher. Beauty fish. There we go, that is the third fish of the day. And it is just a gorgeous wild cutthroat trout. Beauty fish, look at the kipe on that jaw of that fish. We are gonna get a release on him. Got one. It's a good little spot right here. Hardest fighting one of the day for sure. Nice one, very silver. Oh, there he is. Another one. Casting right along the side of a point here. I'm gonna try and get a little quick release on this guy and keep moving on because I've still got more water to fish here and more bush to whack my way through. Beautiful 16 incher, 17 incher, very silver. Off he goes. Once again, I'm gonna really emphasize that being stealthy and on a point like this where the fish could be sitting right there, approaching slowly and casting where you're going to go before you go there, you can definitely get some fish that you might have spooked otherwise doing that. It's also important to be careful when you're getting close to a drop off like this. Always wear a wading belt that will keep your waders from completely flooding and making it harder for you to swim. And also be really aware that the bottom can be really soft or change from what you think it is, or the depth can change from what it looks like very quickly, especially if you're doing shore fishing like this or any fishing alone. And again, you know, I just cast straight out there, but the best casts and what I'm really looking forward to here are straight along the side of the shore along all the cover. If 
you can find a little point like this that goes out just far enough for you to be able to cast sideways and really fish that drop off well, that can be some of the best casts you can make from the shore. So what I'm gonna recommend in terms of jigs to use does vary a bit, but since it's been working so well today, I think I've gotta show off this exact jig right here. It is a 16th ounce black jig head with a yellow and brown soft plastic on it. The exact brand of this soft plastic is a Jenko Fishing Mermaid Jig. They're a little hard to find in Canada, but regardless, that is what this is. Now, again, as with some other things in this video, I went into quite a lot of detail in the previous tutorial video on the exact jigs that I like to use, but anything really that's dark colored and an inch or two long should work pretty well. Got one. There we go. This thing's fighting a little weird. What is it? Oh, it's cutty. Pretty good cutty. Right in the shallow water now. Hey there, buddy. There we go. Nice one. Very pretty. He'll look great in this sunshine. I'm going to release him right away. Beauty. Beauty fish. Oh my God, I wish I got that on camera. I'm fishing quite a big, nice bank now. And I just made a cast into this creek inflow, right into the current like that, even a little closer in, like right there. And, and about halfway in, I felt a little tap. And then right in front of me, I saw like an 18 or 19 inch cutthroat come up and absolutely smash my jig and somehow miss it. And I mean in six inches of water in front of me, he did that. Maybe he'll take again. He took again. He took again. I think that's the same fish. Oh my god. That is insane. No way. Yeah, that's the same fish. He's maybe not quite 19 inches, but he's pretty good. He's 16, 17, maybe 18. That is hilarious. Oh, that's hilarious. And he's just a beautiful fish as well. There we go. That is crazy. Well, the camera's showing 3% battery here, so I gotta show this fish off like lightning fast. Have a look at the colors on that beautiful cutthroat right there. Look at those spots. Got him. There we go, that is another fish. This one was on a tied black marabou jig actually, and this one feels pretty good. That feels like a pretty good one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's definitely a good one. Try and get the net out here. I don't think I got the strike of that, but I felt a couple little taps and I clicked the camera right after because I thought this thing would strike again, and he did. Beautiful fish. There we go. And again, on a 16th ounce tied all black marabou jig with a little bit of red tinsel. How about that? I don't know what number fish this is, but that is another gorgeous cutty. Beautiful green back. How gorgeous. Bang. Well, despite these tough conditions, that's not so bad. Oh my god. Well, my jig is snagged. Ooh, there's a bunch of nails in this. My jig is snagged in it. God, this thing's heavy. This thing's waterlogged to shit. 
my jig is stuck in the very end of that overhang tree there on that branch that's sticking straight down, the last one. And I am not losing that goddamn jig. So I found a 20 foot board laying right there and I'm gonna use it to snap the branch off of that tree and get my jig back. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing that. I don't even know if this is gonna be long enough actually. Might be, might not be though. Yeah, it might, it might not be. Yeah! <laughs> I did it! You learn something new and incredibly stupid every day you watch one of my videos. There's the jig right there. Surely you gotta leave a like for that. Oh, well, I'm quite a ways into this video now, and I just realized I haven't really gone over in detail exactly how I fish the jig and, you know, let it fall and twitch it and all that. You've seen me do it, but I haven't actually explained it. And again, this is something that I went into a lot of detail in, in the original how to catch a big trout of every species with jigs video. So again, I'll refer you back to that one. But for shore fishing, it is a little different and there are a couple nuances to that that I can explain right now. So for the most part, again, I'm looking for some type of cover and then I'm trying to cast along that cover. You don't have to make long casts, you don't have to make perfect casts, but if I'm casting along the cover of this log, I'm keeping my jig in an area that has a feature or piece of cover as long as I possibly can. And I'm just letting my jig sink and twitching it about every couple seconds. Twitch it more and reel more if you're using a heavier weighted jig head, but I'm going pretty light right now and not big twitches, just enough to sort of pick it up and let it fall again. In general, you want to let it fall as much as you can while still occasionally giving it a bit of action. Ah, oh, that's hilarious. Well, I was just about to give another little example because this piece of cover right here creates a good, you know, middle area with this sort of arcing shoreline right there where the drop off extends out a little bit. It creates a little funnel zone, that's the best way I can describe it of a good spot for you to cast. And I cast there without the camera on and hooked into like a little 14 inch cutthroat. And he jumped over that first log right there and then jumped over this second log right here and I lost him. That's hilarious. <sighs> All the way back to the first outflow, that was a bit of a trudge. But I think that I'm gonna give it a little bit of a last shot over on the opposite side of this outflow in one or two nice little spots and then I'm gonna call it a video. Oh my god! Holy crap, I wish I was recording that strike. I swear to god, in the exact same spot that I got that one vertical jigging last weekend. I just hooked this guy, and that's a big one. That's one of the bigger ones of the day, and he's almost going into all the sticks. I didn't even get all of his jumps on film. He jumped about 10 times before I clicked the stupid thing. This might even be a brown, actually. I think it might be a brown. What are you? Is that a brown? That's a brown trout. Oh my god, that's sick. That is sick. That is one of the bigger fish. Oh man, I'm sunk about two feet deep into the sand. That's one of the bigger fish of the day, and that is a very good brown trout. That is sick. That is so cool. Oh my god, I wish I recorded the whole thing. Because I literally, if you see this branch right here, I cast to that branch, maybe closer to me. Just let it sink, and on the fall, this big brown took. And jumped like five or six times. Then I clicked the camera on, and then he continued to jump from out there towards me swam all the way through all this shallow water. Oh God, I almost fell. And then almost, and then almost broke me off with a bunch of sticks right below me. That was insane. And a great way to top off this video. Yes, a gorgeous conditioned fish right there. They do not get much better than that. Beautiful. 
beautiful fish. 